So it's finally game day. We done finally made it. Shout out to all the Ravens fans that's going to be out there in Tampa. Because I know with Ravens fans, they always ready. Like with them Florida Ravens games, they always come through heavy like crazy so shout out to all of y'all that are going to be out there at the game it's going to be a lot of fun tampa bay stadium raymond james it is one of the best that i've ever been to so y'all enjoy yourselves it should be a real real good one now uh speaking of the baltimore ravens um we got some big news that literally directly impacts the baltimore ravens not for this game but for next week because of course next week we play the cleveland browns and their starting quarterback, it had been Deshaun Watson. And even though Deshaun Watson, he had not been playing good football like at all. He had looked like really, really bad. All kinds of bad. I don't know what was going on with him. But um, Ravens will not be playing him because Deshaun Watson is out for the season. It said that he has a ruptured Achilles. Uh, he injured himself in the game uh, yesterday and his season is officially over. Uh, so the Baltimore Ravens, I would say they will play DTR, Dorian Thompson Robinson, but they said he has a finger injury uh, that he has to get an MRI on. They did say that the neck, the x-rays with his uh, finger injury were negative, uh, but we'll see. So the Baltimore Ravens, of course, they got to deal with Baker Mayfield and the Bucks this week, but next week, I mean, in six days. In six days when they play the Browns, uh, it's either going to be Jamison Winston uh, or Dorian Thompson Robinson. Uh, so that's big with the Ravens. But also staying in the division and other quarterback news. We saw yesterday Mike Tomlin was like, look, I'm going with Russell Wilson. I was a lone ranger on this one. It was my decision. It wasn't nobody else's. We going with Russell Wilson. And they were sitting there for and two. So you would think like, why would you try to fix something that's not broken? But. You got to respect it because, like a lot of y'all do with the Baltimore Ravens, which I really appreciate and really respect, even though things may be going better, the record may be looking better, especially after the first two games, you're still willing to call out stuff and issues that you see and ways that the Baltimore Ravens can improve even more. I, I love when people do that, and y'all do a really great job of doing that, so keep that up. But with Mike Tomlin, he's doing the same thing. He like, look, the Steelers... Yeah, we 4-2 and two right now, but you know what? Our quarterback play, we, we want to get more out of not only our quarterback, but our receivers too. And that's exactly what they did last night because he uh, benched uh, Justin Fields and started Russell Wilson, and, and they beat up uh, on the Jets 37-15. Uh, so with Russell Wilson, like I remember I said in yesterday's video, like ooh, I feel like going against Russell Wilson, that could be better for the Baltimore Ravens because it's – Less to deal with, but at the same time, Russell Wilson, he could still uh, present his problems as well. So we'll see. By the time I mean, we don't play Steelers for like a little less than a month, um, but still with Russell Wilson in now instead of Justin Fields, let's see how he continues to do uh, up until we face Pittsburgh. And it's like, man, with Pittsburgh, it's, it's been t it's past time for us to beat the Steelers, man. With Lamar Jackson, Steelers just they, they just and I uh, Again, a lot of context, but still, it's time. It's time. It, it, it don't been too long. So we need to get back on track, especially against Pittsburgh, and especially because they doing good right now. They doing good right now. They sitting at five and two, but the Baltimore Ravens, they need to do what they need to do to get to five and two. And that starts tonight. And speaking of tonight, y'all make sure y'all come through for the live stream for the Ravens and Bucks game. Whew. I'm, I'm just I'm prepared. I'm prepared to whatever happens. Let's see. But anyway, uh, we got some questions leading up to this game that Team Keep It Clean sent in. If you would like to have your question featured in a video, all you got to do is send me an email at teamkeepitclean at gmail.com or for the Team Keep It Clean patrons. Special shout out to y'all. Uh, you can become a Team Keep It Clean patron if you go to patreon.com slash engravenvids. Let's get into this first question from my guy Mark JG. He said, uh, what's up, Engraven? What's up, Mark? How you feeling before the game, my friend? Good, I hope. He said, uh, as always, I hope you are doing well and staying on the up and up. He said, I was going to ask this question, but you hit it on Ronnie Stanley on, on rather if you should resign him or not. Personally, it's a priority, I'd say. Uh, do more of a prove it extension. I say that because it gives you the chance to stack healthy seasons, but at the same time, he deserves his money and he's earned it. Yeah, that's tricky right there. Because with, with Ronnie Stanley, that's what I would be. That's what I would be scared of, though, because this he's playing some amazing football right now. Shout out to Ronnie Stanley. But. History is history for a reason. Now, we obviously don't want history to repeat itself injury-wise. 
but there would be that risk because he would be another year older. Um, and, hey, maybe this offseason, whatever he did, this is best offseason for him or what. Uh, but I would just be a little worried about that. But you're right. Like, if Ravens signed him to a proven extension, like, that would be a, that would be him doing a disservice to himself because he's been out there, and it's only been, what, six games so far? But he's been out there. He's been doing his thing. He's been playing really, 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 really great. Not good, great football. So shout out to Ronnie Stanley. Um, so in order for him to get the most money that he possibly can, it can't be no prove it deal. It, it, it really can't be. So we'll see. But anyway, continue. He said, uh, also, excuse me, he said, as I see with the running backs, I don't see Justice Hill as a second string back. I see him as the role player. And I don't, I don't expect him to go away at all when Keaton Mitchell comes back. That's true. That's true. Uh, he said, I guess you can say he's more of a flex spell type of back, and he can relieve both Keaton and Derek. He fits anywhere. He can catch catch it or explode it north and south. Also, that, that's true. You spot on with that one. He said, also, I want to shout out Derek and Justice. They have been carrying the load so far all by themselves. No other running back has hit the field unless you count Jay, Zay's jet sweeps. <laughs> Don't call Cause Zay Flowers no running back. But no, that, that's again, that's a jet sweep. He, he's becoming a jet sweep king. He's a prince right now still, but let's see how that continues. But, yeah, shout out to them because that's, that's a lot of work. That's a lot of work. And they, like, they be putting in a lot of work. So he said a new wide receiver has entered the fray, and he is Cooper Cup. And there was a report that multiple teams called about him. Do you think Baltimore did? I'm, I, I would think that they probably did. I don't think it would be anything serious. I think they would just be checking. So, see, I believe he got, like, a crazy huge cap hit. Now, Cooper Cup. That's somebody like Rashad Bateman. He, he know how to get open. Uh, Cooper Cup, good at the yak. Cooper Cup, he um, he got like deceptive speed. He ain't no burner or nothing like that. Um, but he got some deceptive speed. Obviously, he can catch the ball. He been dealing with a lot of injuries though. So mm. he said, lastly, this game will be a good one if we can ex exploit their secondary and take advantage uh, of the on the middle. We got this. I trust the offense to get it done. The defense has to come together. I just hope we are doubted because we tend to do the opposite when we are. Oh, when Ravens he heavily favored. Well, I mean, sometimes I, I get what you're saying, but um, Ravens are a tricky team. Uh, they can beat them games. Oh, Ravens gonna lose. Ravens. I mean, they were heavily doubted against the Chiefs. <laughs> yeah, they lost that one. Uh, they were heavily favored against the Raiders. Mm, they lost that one. Um, so it could be tricky uh, against the Bills. I think were they heavily favored in that one? I, f I forgot. But either way, Ra Ra Ravens could be very, very tricky with it. He said, uh, "Would you be?" open to do a collab with a draft head when the season is over alex from hail mary sports is an awesome one and he has thorough draft analysis i know you're busy but he can do the work for you <laughs> i appreciate that because that, that's real right there man oh uh, yeah I, i'll be open for that for sure man yeah, i just wanted to get some thoughts out before the game tonight and shout out to deshaun watson i don't care what is done or what a player did the browns fan base was awful towards him wishing an injury on a player and laughing about it uh and he's talking about social media comments uh, that made my blood boil and i side with miles and Jameis in their interviews i'm gonna get out of here engraving the team keep it clean stay up well and blessed appreciate you mark next question came from my guy keontae he said i just want to say Devonte adams trolled the flock and now he's with the jets looking like a top 10 safety Chasing down Aaron Rodgers' interceptions. Why you had to use that guy, Allen Poe? And I know there were some people that tried to say, oh, man, y'all, Ravens fans, y'all. You, you know Edgar Allen Poe. He, he stayed in New York for a little bit. He's from New York. I'm like, look, listen, man. Like, don't nobody associate Edgar Allen Poe with no New York. Well, I don't know why. It, everybody in the NFL, even the Baltimore Ravens. They associate Edgar Allan Poe with the Baltimore. I don't even run that. But anyway, uh, he said, now, I've come to the conclusion I don't want anything at the trade deadline but draft capital. If we can even get that, I honestly think we are in a good spot with our players. They just need to all get on the same page. I, I, would, I still wouldn't mind them upgrading uh, at, at wide receiver just to be even more prepared and be even more diverse and just be even, even better, like even better. Like the, how good the guys are playing right now, which is great. I love that. But it don't hurt to get even stronger. Again, I, I got to keep going back to the, this, this reference. Derrick Henry. Ravens were a, have been a great running team. They've been that. But they still got even better. And look what that's done for them. So, like, Ravens right now, they, they are a really good pass, passing team, too. Receivers are doing their job. Tight end doing their thing. But imagine if you upgrade even more. I wouldn't be mad. Trade rumors. Next question came from my guy, Center. He said, hey, Graven, uh, I got a question for you. I've heard rumors about our Ravens being interested in Alvin Kamara from the Saints. I ain't hear about that at all. 
Uh, I mean, no, I, I would highly doubt that, especially with if they didn't have Derrick Henry, I could. But they got Derrick. No, I, 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 I ain't heard nothing about that. Uh, and he said with a cap hit of 18 mil, I can see any reason for us to uh, go after another RB1 when we. Oh, he was saying I can't see. Any reason for us to go after another RB1 when we have a wide receiver, defensive line, uh, and we also need cornerback help, right? I don't, I don't think we really need cornerback help. Okay, let's let's watch the Brandon C. Stevens bounce back game tonight. And this so he can shut all this talk about we needing cornerback help. I know a lot of people have been talking about Mar Marshawn Lattimore and whatnot. But Brandon Stevens tonight, legacy game for our guy. Let's go. Anyway, uh, he said, I mean, if he was cheap, Grab him, but not at 18 mil. And try someone we really need also. What do you think, bro? Uh, long time watching, subscriber. Said, hey, appreciate you, man. Thank you. Uh, no, I, yeah, I, I would agree. I, I would not. I, it would not be logical for the Ravens to add an Alvin Kamara. It just, no, that would be. They already got Derrick Henry. They already got Justice Hill doing his thing. And you got Keith Mitchell getting ready to come back. Alvin Kamara, especially. No, it, it wouldn't make no sense. Next question came from my guy, Marcelo. He said, hey, Raven Viz, quick question I want to hear your thoughts on. If the Baltimore Ravens are going to make a move or a trade uh, at midseason, if yes, what would be the trade uh, the Ravens need or you dreamed of happening? Mm. Well, um, the one that I was dreaming of is officially not going to happen because that guy decided he wanted to go with his buddy, and that's okay. That's okay, Devonta. I ain't, I ain't mad at you, but I am looking at your situation like, hmm. Well, you could have been, but anyway, um, hmm. Dream scenario. Oh, it would be Tyreek Hill. It would be Tyreek Hill, um, because that would give us the receiver. Not that our guys can't. They're not deep ball guys, but it would be Tyreek Hill. Uh, because he would open this thing up big time for the Baltimore Ravens offense as far as that true deep threat. Miami ain't using them. And I know I know two are getting ready to come back. So, I mean, that's that's the Tyreek Hill probably ain't going nowhere. But you never know. Um, as far as the receiver, another receiver that could really compliment uh, the Baltimore Ravens, uh, probably like a Cortland Sutton because he's a the big body jump ball wide receiver. He, he'll go up and get it. And I feel like we... We don't necessarily have that right now. So that would be another good one. But dream would be Tyreek Hill. I'm going to have a conversation about EDC. Next question came from my guy Noah. He said, what's up, Engraven? What's up, Noah? I uh, hope the fam and the little one are doing well. This has been on my mind since the 2020 draft coming off the back of that Titans game that we don't like to talk about. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. We don't talk about Bruno, but we don't talk about that Titans game as well. He said, and it's really starting to get on my nerves now that I'm starting to notice a pattern. I think EDC has a major malfunction to be the smartest man in the room. Uh, now, we know how much the Ravens love to hoard draft picks. That's true. But EDC has been wasting them on injured players for far too long. Ajabo, Voorhees, Adisa. To Isaac, Rasheen Ali, Tyree Phillips. He started doing this with one pick per draft, but now he has picked up the pace using two picks last draft. He even did it when he only had six picks after the Roquan trade. EDC is signing veteran old call a spade a spade players to cover up his mistakes, and nobody seems to notice it. In fact, we call him a genius. The result is the Ravens having a bunch of one-year signings, then have to rinse and repeat. He said, yeah, for example, Jadavian Clowney, Kyle Vinoy, Odell Beckham Jr., Justin Houston, Andre Villanueva, Calais Campbell. Now, with that, um, he said, well, let me continue. He said, all the one-year players contribute to the team not having consistency, compounded by the fact that we are losing coaches and coordinators yearly. Now, with that, you that's part of the NFL right there. Because so, I, I disagree with part of this. Um, while he has been drafting some players that have been hurt, that's true. Um, uh, but that's what free agency is for to compensate for what you might not get in the draft. That's what it's for. Because Javian Clowney, he was signed uh, after the draft. Kyle Vinoy, he was signed way after the draft, even after the season started. He was signed after week three last year. Um, Odell Beckham Jr., he was signed like right before the draft so they could sign Lamar, but he was. He definitely was not the old deal that we were hoping for. Justin Houston, I forgot when they initially signed him, but Justin Houston did good. He did good for the Ravens. He was there for a couple of years, and he was doing his thing. Uh, Villanueva, oh yeah, we remember how that one went. Calais Campbell, he was traded to the Ravens, I think, before the draft. Calais Campbell was really impactful for the Baltimore Ravens, too. Um, but that's what free agency is for, again. Uh, whatever you don't hit on in a draft or whatever, it's just to – Sort of not necessarily overcompensate, but uh, yeah, compensate. It's, it's there to compensate for what you might not get uh, in the draft, and that's especially free agency after the draft. Uh, but anyway, he said, Oh, and you also talked about we are losing coaches and coordinators yearly. Every team does that. That's part of the NFL. 
Every team is going to lose coaches and coordinate every single year. Whether they're successful, whether they're not successful, they're going to lose people every single year. So that's what the NFL is about, just replacing players. You cannot keep the same team every single year. Now, when Ravens do great, hey, we hope, like, oh, man, we want all these. Like, like look at last year. They went 13-4. and four, They were amazing team. And we knew, we just knew there was going to be a lot of roster turnover, a lot of change with the Baltimore Ravens, a whole lot. So... You, you can't keep the same team every year, whether it's coaches or players. But continuing, he said, does he do this to feed his ego? I don't know. What I do know is that over the past few years, the Ravens have always been in the running to compete for a Super Bowl, but it all, but they always seem to come up short somehow, some way. A major part of the, this is the lack of pass rush, which we finally saw coming to fruition last year. And the Ravens had the number one defense putting up historical numbers. Why not invest those grab bag picks and trade for a A1 DN or a number one wide receiver? Now... There are picks that the Baltimore Ravens, like, I would call it uh, playing with house money because there's some picks where it's like, uh, okay, I, I guess. Um, like the pick with, uh, with Rasheen Ali, I just felt like they picked him because Keith Mitchell was hurt, and they were like, all right, well, let's just, let's just have somebody for, like, RB3 for now until Keith Mitchell comes back. But with Devin Leary, that was, I feel like that was just a throwaway pick because you had Lamar Jackson, obviously. Uh, you had, even had Josh Johnson. Uh, so I feel like the Devin Leary pick was that, that was just really a, a throwaway pick. Like ah uh, uh, whatever, okay, we'll just we'll just draft and see what happens. Um, so with with the picks that you're talking about, you're saying grab bag picks. It sounds like, sound like you're talking about like a just a random pick somewhere to get a number one DN or number one wide receiver. You gonna have to you gonna have to give some higher than those picks to get a number one DN or number one receiver. Uh, he said, or oh, do we watch EDC continue to gamble on drafting injured players, hoping it'll pay off someday? Tyree Phillips was a third pick and only played two seasons with the Ravens. Ojabo, a second-round pick in 2022, has only played 10 games in his career. Adisa Isaac was a third-round pick in only one game so far. Don't you think trading some of these picks are worth a young Pro Bowl player? Now, I, I certainly do. I certainly do. And he also said, beware of the little expenses a small leak will sink a ship. Ooh, okay. You, okay. you, ain't, have, you ain't had to kill him like that on the, on the outro. I like that. But, yeah, it just, I, 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 I get what you're saying. Because you don't want, like, if a, a, a player is a lot of times who a player is. Um, if they got injury issues, if they, if they had injury issues throughout college and whatnot, and you drafting them, it, it'd be hard to expect them to come in and all of a sudden, all right, they're healthy now. Okay, let's roll. Let's get it. You would hope that, but that should not be uh, an expectation. So I think um, as far as injured players, I, I think with the draft, it's a gamble. Uh, it's a big gamble. Sometimes EDC will take a shot on a player who may have had some injury history, and, and he hopes that, all right, maybe we, maybe we could change him. Um, other times, he, they, they won't be a player with injury history. Sometimes they'll develop it on the Baltimore Ravens. Sometimes they won't, the, the draft is just it's a big, big gamble. So it's up to EDC, it's up to the, the, the scouting department just to make the right decisions when it comes to drafting players. And hey, sometimes they can make a right decision, but things will happen that are out of their control. Things will just happen. Circumstances change, situations happen and whatnot. It's just part of the game of the NFL. But I, I just feel like um, with what you were saying, it's, you, and you didn't make it like it was black and white, but I just feel like it's, it's not so black and white 